Hello and welcome to this tutorial. We are going to paint a beach view using six colors as listed on the screen. I'm using a 20 inch by 16 inch canvas for this painting. There are three parts to this painting. Sky, which occupies about a third of the surface. Water, which occupies about 40% of the surface. And then sand at the bottom. Let's start by sticking a masking tape about a third from the top edge of the canvas. We need three colors for the sky, cerulean blue, white and pink. Add some cerulean blue near the top edge of the canvas, spread it using a palette knife and then spread smoothly using a square brush. Remember to use horizontal strokes only. Now add a generous amount of white just under the blue. Spread it using the palette knife first and then use the same square brush to blend the colors. Make sure the color is darker near the top edge and lighter near the masking tape. It could easily take up to a minute to achieve the desired blend and gradient. Remember not to overdo it, else you may not get the proper gradient effect. Add a tiny amount of pink just above the tape and spread it thin using the same square brush. Remember not to drag the pink further away from the tape. Once you're satisfied with the blend and the gradient, carefully remove the masking tape. We are done with sky and now moving on to water. Once the paint is dry, stick another masking tape just above the horizon line. Leave about a millimeter of the paint visible below the lower edge of the tape. Now for water, we need a mix of three colors, six parts of ultramarine blue, two and a half parts of white and one and a half parts of dark green. Mix these colors using a palette knife. Once the paint is properly mixed, take some paint on a clean square brush and apply under the tape using horizontal strokes. You don't have to spread the paint uniformly. Even if some areas look darker than the others, it's perfectly okay. Seawater reflects a range of colors. Keep applying the paint and cover until the middle of the canvas. Now take some pink on the same brush and spread it over the blue and closer to the tape. No need to blend the pink perfectly with the blue. Once this is done, we are going to apply a lighter mix of blue, green and white to cover the remaining part of the water. Add some more white to the previous mix of blue, green and white 
mix well and then apply it using the same square brush. Paint further down until just about 25% of the canvas remains to be painted. Add some more white paint to create an even lighter mix and apply using the same brush. This time paint mostly near the bottom edge of the water to make that area appear lighter in color. Once you're done, remove the masking tape. And now it's time to paint sand. Take equal measures of yellow ochre and white and mix well using a palette knife. Load this mix onto a clean square brush and start applying on the canvas just below the water. No need to worry even if you paint over the water slightly. We are going to blend that part anyway. Remember to use horizontal strokes throughout. Now to make the sand look realistic, use some of the blue, green and white mix and paint over the yellow. Use some of the pink as well near the bottom edge of the canvas, but make sure you're only using a tiny amount of pink. Gently blend the colors and smoothen out where the sand meets the water. And we are done with the sand. Now the final and the longest part of this painting, the waves. Start by drawing a few curvy horizontal lines in the water using ultramarine blue. Then mix two parts of white, two parts of burnt umber and one part of dark green to create a greenish grey colour. We will use this colour to paint the shadows of the wave. Once mixed, load this paint onto a filbert brush and paint the shadow of the nearest wave. This is the edge of the water. We don't need a smooth, even distribution of paint here. Random is just fine. Repeat this process for another wave. Make sure that the shadows are not parallel to each other. Now add some more white to the palette and load this onto a clean filbert brush. And using a dabbing technique, add this white paint to the top half of the first shadow.
then drag down the white paint lightly without fully covering the shadow. Repeat the same process for the second shadow. Apply the white paint using the dabbing technique and drag the paint down ever so lightly. Now add some tiny ripples. Use white paint and a filbert brush. I'm going to create a smaller wave and some more ripples too. Now the small wave needs a shadow. I'm going to use the same mix I used before. Now it's time for a big wave. Similar to before, Load the filbert brush with the greenish grey paint and paint a larger shadow across the canvas. Now some parts of this wave have just landed back on the water surface while the other parts are still up in the air. Let's mark the landing part of this wave with white paint. Now using semicircular strokes, paint the curvature of the wave. There will be water droplets in the air near a wave. Let's paint this effect by gently dragging up some white paint using a dry brush. The landing part of the wave is usually the brightest. Apply more white paint there using the same dabbing technique. Make the wave brighter if required and give it a sharp top edge.
smoothen out the landing part of the wave. Drag some of the white paint up along the shadow. Use some ultramarine blue and repeat this. Now let's create a similar wave on the right hand side of the shadow. Let's add a bit more blue shading to the inside of the wave and this will complete the large wave. And finally, let's paint some smaller distant waves to complete the painting. You can use the similar technique of painting the shadow first followed by adding the white paint. Or you can reverse the order, paint the white first and then the shadow. with that the painting is complete. I really hope you liked it. Please let me know what you think. Stay healthy, stay safe.